Everybody, welcome to Matt Man, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined with me, as always, the telephone operator, Rich Stamboli. Wagwan, what's going on to all my uh, my freaks in the sheets? What and is- with me, as always, is Andrew Zarian, the podcast papu. The podcast papu. <laughs> Happy uh, International Podcasting Day, Rich. Happy International Podcasting Day. What's up? Stupid. <laughs> Stupid title. You don't think it's every day is an international uh, whatever day? You know, I hate that. Me too. I really, really hate that we've yeah. made every day into a holiday for something. It's International Something Day. It's inter- it was like International Hot Dog Day. It was International Race Car Day. I'm into that. I'm into that. Yeah? Don't fuck with that. Do you like hot dogs? dogs? I love hot dogs. Yeah, when was the last time you had a hot dog? Oh, like three nights ago. Oh, I'm jealous. I, I, I do. I'm like a weird hibernator when it comes to hot dogs. Like, it's only summertime for me. Um, Bachelor 3000, $1.99 at PMX. Your skin looks radiant, my boy. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I did a lot oh, of face yeah. stuff today. Did you? In the shower. I got, yeah. I, I got to do a, uh, a facial. Yeah? I, I need to do one. And a cream and a cream pie. That, well, the cream pie. I love. I love a good cream pie from Martha's. I don't know why this is weird to everybody. She does do it the best. She does do it the best. Full exposure. It's fantastic. You can see everything. Everything. No, they. You can see how it's made. It's fantastic. I don't know why you guys are getting worked up. I'm talking about banana cream pies. All I right? know. And we're talking about professional wrestling. Uh, man, you know, a lot of changes in wrestling. The wrestling world is shifting as we speak. Uh, you know, last night Sammy Guevara won the TNT title, his first major title. Uh, oh, which yeah. I think is really cool. Very cool. Um, there's a lot. I mean, there's so many things going on. So why don't you begin, Rich? Where do you want to go? So uh, do you want to jump into the news real yeah. quick? All right. So check this out. Um, the Royal Rumble location was announced. Yes, it was. St. Louis at yep. the uh, the Dome at America's Center. Yeah. I didn't know this one. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, didn't even, I didn't ask, but I didn't know either. The, so. R- the Rumble's always good. The Rumble's always fun. Um, I think we're doing something special for the Rumble, right? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Stay tuned. Stay um, tuned, as always. Ronda Rousey had her kid. Honestly, I thought she had her kid like a month ago. It's Ronda, been a yeah, Ronda had her kid. <laughs> it's been a blur. And, and I, I, that name is quite difficult to announce. MG Geek, I hope you spelled this right. I'm assuming it's L- Laakia Makalapua Kala, Kaluana Poo Brown? I thought it was. I thought it was. He was. Ju- she was just naming her kid a Greek name. Oh my at god! At one point, and then I saw it continued. Yeah, beyond all the vowels. And listen, a really unique name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. but good for them. Strong Travis Polynesian. And, yeah, very strong Polynesian name. Is that what they went with? I guess so. Uh, Hawaiian. Is that what it was? I'm not 100 percent sure. Someone I'm not 100 percent sure of the ethnicity of the of, of the name of the origin of this. Yeah. You know, which uh, it's listen. Some, I'm not. I'm not knocking Ronda Rousey. But sometimes parents curse their kids with weird names. Hey, listen, now now that she's, you know, baby's here, uh-huh. training starts. Yeah, right. You know, WrestleMania season. R- <laughs> Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania in <sighs> Dallas, 100,000 people in the building, possible two nights. You want to do a two-night main event. Isn't that the two-night main event? Mom versus man. Mom versus man. The mom versus the man. I mean, listen, if the rock thing still happens. Yeah. One Night two, you do Dwayne and... And and uh, and Roman yeah. and night one, you could do Becky and Ronda. I it, think that's a fantastic match, Becky and Ronda. Like, I want to see it. I would love to see that. And you know what's funny? Like, uh, Becky dropped that pregnancy weight super fast. She like, worked out. She was working. Her dad, she did not want to return yeah. without being 100%. Inhuman. Yeah. And, inhuman, inhuman. And I bet you Ronda will do the same thing. Also another inhuman. You know? Ronda, Ronda and Brock Lesnar have that same superhuman ability to just be superheroes yeah you know they look bananas um we also got the john they're made of bananas they're, they're made of bananas i think that's you think that's a secret to be a good mma fighter yeah. you gotta be your body needs all the potassium you need to have the consistency of bananas <laughs> like you're just when, soft to the touch when somebody punches you it just sinks in it doesn't hurt <laughs> Uh, oh, Travis is Hawaiian. That's why. There okay, you go. There you okay, go. that makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Makes perfect sense. Um, we also had the establishment of the John Huber Legacy Foundation. Um, I'm a little unclear to what it's going to do, but apparently the gist of it is it will assist creatives who have familial limitations. I what feel that? like that's inaccurate. I feel like it's financial limitations. Oh, financial limitations. Yeah, like where... They're teaching. I I I think it's they're 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 trying to help creatives and people in the creative industry who are coming into money 
figure out what to do with okay it. He, here's yeah. what here's what the john huber legacy foundation put out the, the okay. family and friends of john huber announced the creation of the john huber legacy mm-hmm. fa- uh, foundation the foundation will focus on providing support to people in creative fields mm-hmm. who have not taken the next step in their career due to financial a uh, family obligations okay there we go all right you know what cool. i think that's that's a cool that's a very cool and, and resourceful useful uh foundation that's good that's uh, very okay. good excellent okay um, and then Alexa Bliss is taking time off after we saw that happen. Uh, they they <laughs> essentially wrote her off, and she's getting uh, nasal sh- surgery mm-hmm. along with Sheamus because Sheamus broke his nose again. Yeah, which is n- really bad. That's not I, good. I, no, no, no. Like I don't think people realize like he had that break and he had to wear that mask and he broke mm-hmm. the like. That's not good at all. No, <laughs> it's, it's it's so I, I wish him the best, uh, but. <laughs> And then here's something interesting here, Rich. Yes. Shane McMahon, uh, reports came out that he was uh, he was no longer with WWE in any capacity. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Fightful Select posted this uh, partially. You know they were kind of yeah. putting it together, and news came out that there's, they're denying it. They're saying no, there's nothing like that. Uh, he's still on a contract. I, I've I've asked about Shane. Shane is always like mm. a strange situation. Uh, I, I would not look at Shane's contracts uh, as any mm-hmm. indication as anything going on with him in the company. Unless, obviously, he signs and he shows up on TV and they're like, okay, Shane's wrestling. But, you know, it's his, essentially, it's his company. You know, it's his inheritance. It's his dad's company. His sister runs the place. His brother-in-law, he could come and go as much as he wants. Is this the biggest what if in wrestling? What if Shane McMahon goes to AW? MLW. MLW. <laughs> you know, Court Bauer, we had him on. Awesome dude. Um, Shane, and New J- Shane and the G1, bro. You know what? <laughs> if you don't want to see that, screw you. Uh, you know what? I want to see you, Shane. You know what? You are you are not a a train wreck human being, and I and I don't like you anymore. I, I would who wouldn't want to see Shane in the G1? <laughs> <laughs> Shane McMahon, Toro Yano? Nobody wants to see that. Shane McMahon, Shingo. Shane McMahon, Tanahashi. Oh. Dream matches. Six star, eight star matches right oh, there. Shane versus the Cold Skull Sonata. <laughs> I think uh, I'm giggling because I just imagine somehow Shane taking a giant bump in every match. Just on the crowd. Just falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just perpetually falling. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, would not be, I would not be too worried about Shane McMahon's situation. I expect him to always be part of that company. Hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Rich. Uh, so we got uh, uh, the WWE. The WWE draft is this week, and apparently, NXT talent will be involved. Yes, uh, I posted that on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was told that everybody's under the assumption that NXT talent will be involved in the draft. It's going to be uh. one sided. You're not going to get two sides. But uh, you know, don't don't be shocked if you see people from the main roster go down to NXT every now and then. Like a Mandy Rose, you mm-hmm. know, someone yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's interesting because Hit Row is a name that people are throwing out there. L.A. Knight is a name that people are throwing out there. Uh, I think you still need these guys on NXT. Yeah. Considering they're taking a different turn right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we'll talk about NXT and the and the edginess that they have brought to TV the last week. Yeah. You know, you had uh, you had that crazy Scott Steiner promo by Braun Breaker. Yes. Where he said, "I don't give a shit." You know one of those? Yeah, we can say shit now, apparently. We can say shit everywhere. Everywhere. Shit's okay. Uh, And we had that. And then we had the condoms at the end. Yeah. Which was uh, very bizarre. Yeah. That, I feel like that is just straight up a Vince thing. Right? Yeah. Like, like, do you use condoms on your honeymoon? Hell no. No. I mean, like, what a silly. Never. Never. I mean, you you could have alluded in a different way. I, I feel like you had, like, a bunch of 20 year olds that have never gotten laid. Writing that skit, and then he pulls out the condoms, and then he winks, you know, like one of those. Do you think that also could translate to him not going to Raw? Oh, no, he's not going to Raw. He's staying on the main Raw. He's staying in NXT for a while. (laughs) They love him over there. Uh, uh, The Hit Row thing I find interesting. I feel like they're going to be the face of NXT for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Hit Row? They should be. They're good. Yeah, they're great. Grimes is another one. People are saying call up, but I think you should stay down there. You need talent down there, guys. You need something. Wouldn't wouldn't it go against the mandate of nobody small and no indie guys if they brought up everybody that you mentioned, like LA Knight on the main roster and Cameron Grimes, you know, these aren't like I, I hate to say it, but like, you know, we got we got inundated with that mandate of like we need big 
because we need big yeah. dudes again. Well, they're not. Know? I think they're they're going to focus heavily on athletes, but that yeah. doesn't mean they're not going to have some of these, you know, indie guys there. I, I, you know, and everybody that I spoke to, they're like, yeah, the reporting, you know, it, it's it's pretty inaccurate because mm-hmm. we've never said we're not going to we're not doing independent wrestlers. If there's a guy out there that's fantastic, I mean, this is literally a quote from somebody there. Yeah, yeah. There's a guy out there and he's fantastic, and we could grab him. We're going to grab him, mm-hmm. but we're not. Their focus is not going to be the indies. Right. It's not going to be going to England to find, you know, a untapped indie talent or going to, you know, PWG and sitting there. Right. Which I feel like that was such a beautiful part of the NXT process was William Regal friggin traveling the world to find these guys. You know, yeah. I do think one hopeful that we always mention on the show, Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu, well, Jacob Fatu has a tremendous match yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, where it's a it's a two champions facing off against Hammerstone. I think mm-hmm. that's fantastic, but I think he he definitely will have a place. Mm-hmm. I think a guy like Hammerstone. Yeah, I, I mean, you wouldn't want to grab that guy. He's an indie guy, you know. So the definition that they're going based on what an indie guy is, I think it's very different to how we we're defining it. Yeah, like we're not talking about just getting people that have never wrestled before. We're talking about guys that guys and girls. That have an athletic background, have mm-hmm. a sports, uh, like high, high level, high level, yeah. collegiate level athlete background mm-hmm. or a professional athlete. They love to get football players or like a Parker Boudreaux or uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. A great, great kind of bodybuilders. That's another one. You know, just, just specimen. Riddick Moss. Riddick Moss is back. Yeah. You know, that's a good example of this. I wouldn't be surprised if Mojo comes back in some mm-hmm. capacity under a different gimmick. And I'm not saying I know that, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, based on what they're doing. And historically, and again, this is not a defense. I'm I'm repeating. I'm just repeating what mm-hmm. what has been said to me. And a defense for their their screening. When is when did they historically in the history of this company all their top acts, their mm-hmm. successful acts, they didn't they didn't go and get indie guys ever. They right. went and got. I mean, Steve Austin was a football player. Dwayne was a Rock was a football player. Uh, Kevin Nash was a basketball player. Yeah, you know, like that, the the sports transition thing I find very interesting. And it's still like that. You know, be, but like, I think with The Rock, like, that was his life, right? With Austin, he always wanted to be a wrestler, right? Okay. Uh, Roman Reigns, football player. Okay. Came up in the family. He right. wasn't an independent wrestler. Right. Like, they're not saying they don't want wrestlers. They're saying they don't want, they're not going to go, they're not going to follow the same procedure. Roman Reigns was mm-hmm. a football player. Yeah. Um, Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin was a football player. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Miz was a reality star. Fascinating, so, fa- right? so fascinating. I think, but look at right? it. Yeah. John Cena was was John Cena. Limited. He was always John Cena. He was he was a bodybuilder. I yeah. mean, John Cena was always John Cena. Uh, Bobby Lashley. He's fr- He's made of rocks. Yeah. Everybody was. And Biggie was a weightlifter. I think so. I think he was a powerlifter. Powerlifter. Do you think Bobby Lashley just landed one day in uh, the parking lot of FCW? No, no, no. Vince grew just, him like a, like Vince a meteor. Him. Yeah. Vince grew him. He like, planted a seed. Like Muda? Like, yeah. like that Muda? Yeah, like that Muda movie. <laughs> yeah, like that weirdo. Uh, Biggie was a college football player. So mm-hmm. look, look if, if you look at it that way, it, is, it, is it bad? You know, like how bad is what I'm saying to you? It's not that bad yeah, when it's yeah. presented in that way. Listen, I do corporate double, double talk all freaking day long. I get Ugh. what they... Yeah. Like, I, I do it and I hear it and I can read through it. And yeah. this is what... This is... Their approach right now is in the history of this company... Where is the success with independent wrestlers versus getting specimen? Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. I think the other argument is it protects them because if they get specimen, those guys don't want to go anywhere else. Those guys don't know to go anywhere else. Bingo. Right. Bingo. You know, because if you obviously we, we've been doing the show for quite a while. If you guys remember, a lot of these guys were asking for their releases publicly, right? Because yeah. they're not wrestling the way they want to. Right, because they want to wrestle. They want to be wrestlers. You don't get that from like a Braun Strowman, right, or like a homegrown guy like that, or like the specimen, like you mentioned. Like, would Brock ever show up someplace else? I think, it, yeah, for the money, yeah. For Brock, the money. Brock is a mercenary, yeah. You know, wherever the but he's also, you know, he has tremendous success. He's not, he's not a, he's a very bright guy. So, you okay? Are you getting the messages? The, uh, do you hear that? Yeah. Do it again. Yeah, you're you're there. Touch the mic. I don't oh. want to go back to our home planet. Oh, uh-huh, they're call- dude. We don't we don't want to go back. <laughs> that car was parked in front of my, my that car was parked in front of my apartment all day yesterday. Are you in the driveway? The one? No, I'm uh, okay. I'm up the block. The alien hunter. 
I was going to say, if you're in the driveway, we'll just take off. Okay. <laughs> They're talking to me. Oh, the alien hunter. He knows, dude. He, he knows. knows. <laughs> Rich had an alien hunter in front of his in front of his house. Yeah, so, you know, we got to wait and see what happens. Yes. Honestly. Uh, we got to wait and see what's going on, but... Uh, listen, NXT's they're they're doing something different. Ratings were not great. They were down about thirteen mm-hmm. percent overall for the rating. They were in the six six hundreds again. I think the seven hundreds is a very healthy number for them. They should mm-hmm. be in the seven hundreds, low uh, high sixes, low to mid sevens. They can survive there. But when you start dropping to the five hundreds, uh, this was a nice. This is going to be a very interesting example. Okay, because if this thing th- if this falls off the freaking cliff, mm-hmm. right? NXT falls off the freaking cliff. Do you at that point pull it and make it a Peacock exclusive and make it make it hourly? You mean like go back? See, I think I think WWE, much like NASA, is they will never tread back on their older stuff unless it's for a gimmick event, you know, or like you know when. Uh, no, but I'm saying for. I mean, why will it make sense for the network? At a half at a half a million viewers on I th- a Tuesday night. I think so. But yeah. will WWE do that? I don't think so. Like whenever NASA sends up a rocket and let's say like something happens, yeah. they go, That's an attempt at success. They never call it a failure. Mm. I think that's WWE's mentality. This is an attempt at success. Right? And I don't see them going, let's scale it back, let's put it back on Peacock or whatever, unless they're forced to. Yeah. I, the NXT thing, they, you know, overall, the, and then we'll move mm-hmm. on, but the overall impression is that they kind of fell in, they got trapped into this indie style. Uh-oh. They're coming back. I think I hear that, yeah. Dude, everything's breaking in here. We need to gut this whole studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they kind of fell into this indie style that was never the intention when they realized how many wrestlers are available mm-hmm. and they could use it as a finishing school more than a developmental. Right. And they kind of screwed themselves because... Think about it this year, right? 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you looked at this roster mm-hmm. and you took Bobby Roode, you took Samoa Joe, The Revival, Nakamura, and DIY, you put them all on the main freaking roster. At that, mm-hmm. mo- like, you know, forget about developmental. They're, these guys are finished. They're yeah, done. Yeah. This is not developmental anymore. You take these guys, put them on the main roster. What does 2016 look like? What does 2017 look like? Right. When right. you don't have these guys sitting in development. Adam Cole in developmental mm-hmm. for four years. Really nuts when you think about that. But, yeah. you know, the thing with Adam Cole is like, you can see how he brought whatever knowledge he gained in NXT to his last AEW matches. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, he's so he's very polished. Very polished. Like, that Shawn Michaels influence is very evident in his work rate right mm-hmm. now, which is really yeah, and awesome. And he only got better. Yeah. And again, there's, there's an argument for sending people to NXT. For yeah. sure. Uh, and then, uh, there's, so the draft begins mm-hmm. this week. Are you excited for the draft on Friday? On I, Monday? Yeah, sure. Uh, the draft was supposed to take place a month earlier, uh-huh. but it was delayed. It was supposed to be after SummerSlam to set up everything, especially for Big E. And they decided to delay it. Um, I think the UK, I don't know if it had to do with the UK tour mm-hmm. that they did. I don't know what the reason was. That might've been a reason, but, uh, we're going to see a draft and, you know, we'll see what happens. But we have to remember this time around, they got to keep things a little bit equal. Yeah, but also, like, at the end of the day, does it matter? Because how did New Day end up on, on like, just teaming with Big E for the last couple of weeks? I don't know. It's supposed to be on separate shows, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I, I think it's, is it even, like, a gotcha for ratings at this point? Or is it, like, are they trying to pump excitement? They, you, know what, you know what I'm excited about? Yeah. I'm excited to see who, who from NXT goes where, you know? Or if there's, like, a... Like somebody from Raw or SmackDown goes back down to NXT, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know who's going where. I've heard names. I've heard a ton of names mm-hmm. going everywhere. I I just don't feel comfortable confirming because I have no proof. I and don't if, have a I don't have a second source. And if you want to make NX pop those ratings, you put like Sami Zayn or Kevin Owens back on NXT, right? Yeah, like okay, so you put Kevin Owens down there mm-hmm. for like you do the Finn Balor treatment. You could yeah. have he could have some pretty cool matches there. But I think at this point. Those guys are way too big to go down there anymore. You think so? Yeah, I think it's. I think with the revamp, mm-hmm. it, it just it's not it's not the same fit anymore. It's a new territory. So uh, I expect those a lot of those guys to move away from NXT, the Trampas and the Garganos and all those guys. Kyle O'Reilly, I, I mean, he's a he's a tremendous hit there, but I don't know how much longer he's going to be doing that. Roderick Strong's another one, right? You know, what do you do with Roddy? Obviously, you've essentially told mm-hmm. him that his position is useless. Right. And he's he's a glorified trainer down there. 
it's 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 weird how like the wheels are turning. Do you want to take this super chat? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Brandon Charles Powell, four ninety nine. What's up, you legends? Who do you think will ultimately beat Roman Reigns? Uh, Brock, uh, Drew, yeah. Rock, Rock. Yeah, maybe maybe Big E. I'm gonna go Finn. Finn, you yeah. think Finn's gonna? I'm gonna go him? Finn. I'm gonna go Finn. Oh. Uh, so. <sighs> It's interesting where these guys are going to end up, right? It's also interesting how Bobby Fish signed with MLW, but now it I, I guess they're doing the TNT open challenge going forward. So we're getting Bobby Fish, Sammy Guevara next week. We're getting Bobby Fish, Sammy Guevara next week, right. which is very cool. So how does this blend in? Does he huh. join? You know, do you start a feud with Bobby Fish? Do you uh, do you add him to the that elite? is the weirdest noise? It really is. I think what's happening is the the my mic cable's bad. Okay. Okay. And the DBX is going. Okay. So I need to figure out where this issue is because it's causing some sort of interference. I think Deacon's playing Metroid. <laughs> I think it does sound like Metroid, and it sounds right? just like Metroid. Yeah. Like those noises sound do just like Metroid. You guys hear it? I, I don't think they hear it. You there's like these little weird alien noises that are happening. Um. Very interesting. And Charlie Orr says it's him. Okay, nobody else hears it. So, um, Bobby Fish versus Sammy Guevara next week is really cool, right? Mm -hmm. Does Bobby Fish align with the elite, or do they not touch that? Maybe they jump him. Does Maybe he starts a feud with him. They jump him. Does Roddy come over? Does Kyle O'Reilly come over? Do you get Red Dragon again? Do you get these guys doing... Undisputed Era when the Elite kicks out Adam Cole. Listen, I think a lot of people are questioning their place in that company. It even seems on like the main yeah. even on the main roster, even on the main WWE roster, a lot of people are now reevaluating mm -hmm. their future because here's an opportunity for a lot of people that have made a lot of money and yes. they're in a financially secure position. Yes. Right? I'm not. I'm not going to name names because everybody because once you start associating money with people, everybody mm -hmm. goes crazy and they start tweeting them. Right. But if we are talking about a guy like Kevin Owens, right? You would assume that he's been there for a long time. He's mm -hmm. made good money. He's gotten taken care of. Yeah. And now would be the moment for him to rethink things and say, hey, listen, if I, I, you know, he's still young. He's not an old guy. No, not at all. He could go away for three years, go, go to AEW, do something really fun, make good money there, mm -hmm. and then come back if he doesn't like it. Get in the Hall of Fame. Where? In WWE? Yeah. Like, not for like 15 years. You don't think so? No. Not for like 20 years, probably. Get out of here. Really? Yeah, he's 30-something years old, right? Yeah. How old is he, Kevin? I think he's 35. Yeah, he's 37. He's my age. Okay. So he has a couple of years. Listen, I, and I think at the end of the day, there, there's a philosophy over there yeah. where people, a lot of people are have bought into the sports entertainer aspect of things, mm -hmm. and they are sports entertainers, and that uh, this is what they do. And this is the the supreme uh, version of pro wrestling is this. Right. And, and by the way, everybody agrees on that. Mm -hmm. If you talk to anybody in sales, anybody in advertising, anybody in marketing, anybody right, in right. television, when you tell them wrestling, they they look at WWE, their, over, their presentation is the creme de la creme. Right. They are, there's, they're, they, this is wrestling to them. Everything else is, is hoking, it's, it's weird, it's like, uh, why is it a sport? I mean, I have had conversations with people, sit downs where they're telling me like, no, WWE is real pro wrestling. What these other guys do is not not pro wrestling. And I think that's hysterical. Well, it's funny. Well, from that aspect, absolutely. Because like you would think like from that aspect, because it's like such I'm going to use the term mega bucks. You know, everything else is like Bush League for those guys. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, that's what they know. Yeah. If, th if that's what you know, if you've been if you've been part of the 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 NBC sales team for example mm -hmm. for 20 years and you've sold WWE and you've you know you this is the brain you know and you're not a wrestling fan why mm -hmm. the hell do you care about AEW you don't really know it so it's a lot of skewed philosophies right for everybody but that's how it is uh expect a lot of TV personalities to be involved in the draft i don't i i know that fox is doing some stuff too but i know that uh what's his name steve what Steve Karnacki? Karnacki, uh, I heard, was going to be involved with the Raw side of stuff. Interesting. Logan Paul? I don't know. I mean, you would... Well, I don't know why they don't do, like, a real draft. Yo, bad buddy. Bad buddy. <laughs> I throw you on my pick. You like my bad buddy? I throw you on my pick. <laughs> I don't know, what, I don't Booker know what's going T. on there. Booker T. Okay. All right. I throw you on my pick. Hey, hey. All right. Uh... <laughs> 
What big names to switch? I don't want to go into any names. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, WWE Extreme Rules. We did a watch along for Extreme Rules. It was... Listen, you know what's funny? I had a lot of fun watching it. I did not seem like I had a lot of fun because I was melting down in my brain. Okay. I really was yeah. done with the day. Yeah. But I watched it again, and I and I thought that watching it the first time was a was a better match. I bet better pay per view. And mm-hmm. we'll run this run go through this card quick, and I'll tell you what I thought was better or worse watching it the second time. Okay. Uh, Charlotte Charlotte beating Alexa with Alexa's breakdown. Okay. I thought that was a really, really good match when I watched it. When I watched it a second time, I thought it was probably the worst match on the show. I think, you know why? Because like we were so caught up. We had a couple of drinks. Yeah. We we're hanging out. We we're making jokes. We had Shen on the line, talking about snacks. You know, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, triple Threat, uh, United States Championship, uh, Damon Priest defeated uh, Jeff Daddy this and Sheamus. 13 minutes. Fantastic. Fun. Uh, Poppy Priest beat uh, <laughs> Jeff Daddy. Bianca Belair beating... Um, Becky Lynch by DQ with Sasha Banks interference, 17 minutes. I, I thought that was a good setup. I think those mm. three should be in matches for the, for the remain until, you know, until January. Until the end of time. Until the end of time. The uh, the Sasha return was good. Mm-hmm. So how many how many Sasha returns have there been? Oh, my God. It's like it's like the Big Show. Coming. Yeah. Oh, my God. It, it, she has as many returns as Big Show has as turns. Uh, she's always coming back, <laughs> perpetually returning Sasha Banks. They should call her their return. The perpetually returning Sasha Banks. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, New Day beat Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and almost 18 minutes. All right. That's, good that's match. Fun. That was a fun that match. That was fun. Um, and you had Roman beating. Hold on. Let, yeah. let me let me just stop right okay. here. Okay. <laughs> oh, where's this going? <laughs> okay. The New Day mm-hmm. defeated Bobby Lashley, uh-huh. AJ Styles, yes. and Omos. Yes, yes. We kept saying, like, why the hell didn't they bring back the Hurt Business? They came back right? the next night. They came back the next night. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I guess for story reasons, they came back the next night. But why wouldn't you do this match on the pay-per-view? I agree. I also think AJ and Omo should join the Hurt Business. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see AJ in the Hurt Business. But AJ... Here's hey, the, man. Here's my quick storyline. <laughs> hey, man. So, <laughs> so AJ and Omo join the Hurt Business. Uh, AJ Styles keeps pushing... His uh, frozen yogurt brand, and he keeps wanting to change the name to the Gert business. I got it. You like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. All right. I like it. So, they, you know, he beats Bobby Lashley, AJ, and Omos. Uh, and then you have the Extreme Rules match, Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. Uh, Great match. The Gert business. Uh, weird, weird ending. Great match. With Paul Heyman beat the Demon Finn Balor to retain the title, a 19-minute match. and Via a faulty turnbuckle. So, like, okay. So the demonic stuff helped Finn Balor at one point in the match. Remember when he was laying, he was like on the ground, face down, and then that weird echo happened. Oh, and he started like, and humping. he's like, he's like doing this shit, yeah, yeah, and he yeah. gets up. What? Do it again? What he did? He's there doing you this go. shit. There you go. <laughs> and then he gets up. He's about to go for the coup de gras at the end, and then the the turnbuckle snaps, and he like falls on his ass. Right? You know what I think they should have done? Mm. I here's my ending. All right, and. Give me. Tell me if it's stupid. Okay. Guys, tell me if this is dumb. I think the turnbuckle should have snapped while he like while he did it, but then he, you couldn't see you couldn't see like a rope. I freaking levitate. He's levitating, but while he's levitating, Superman like giant Superman punch, and that's how he loses. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, Finn's can I levitating. Add to that? Can I add to that? Okay. Okay. So he's freaking levitating. Yeah. He goes for the Superman punch. Roman goes for Superman. Roman yeah. nails Finn, and Finn, they pull that cord, and Finn goes flying oh through the God, Right into the crowd. Like, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, just, like, into the abyss. That would be The amazing. lights go off. You never see him again. He just punched him back to his home planet. Just, like, up to the ceiling. Um, You know what, guys? Do this. Do that. Why? Yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. I want to see a levitating Finn Balor get Superman punched into into uh, onto Jupiter. Just, God. <laughs> they can God. do it, man. They can if, do it. If they can make that stupid doll wink... They can do that. That Fakakta doll. Yeah. Thank God that Fakakta doll is gone. I think something else is going to replace it, dude. Unbelievable. Do you think they made enough money with that doll? They sold, like, everything they had in inventory. <laughs> There's nothing left. Oh, boy. So, uh, that would have been the best ending, and I'm positive they could pull it out. I'm positive we're going to see that, where Roman hits somebody mm. with such a Superman punch, they go flying <laughs> into into a whole different universe. And you know what they should do? If they really want to take this shit up a notch, you know, like, I feel like the doll wink was the first step. When Roman does this shit, sparks oh, on yeah. TV, just like, <laughs> love it. 
Unbelievable. Like, remember, uh, Unbelievable. I don't know. I don't watch hockey, but remember when they used to do hockey on Fox and then they would highlight the pucks? Yeah, yeah. The puck was illuminated. Yeah, they yeah. should do that with, with Roman's fist. Finisher moves, you know? I mean, do it. Just just make it into a video game at oh, this yeah. point. What, what's the difference? Uh, Raw, I don't want to spend too much time. Raw no. was Raw. Uh, you had Big E versus Bobby Lashley. It ended in a DQ Hurt Business return. Later, a cage match was set up. Big E defeated Bobby Lashley to retain the championship 60 minutes. Yeah. So, these guys are working double duty every single freaking match and every show now. Yeah. Goldberg via satellite. What do he say? He goes, I'm going to kill you. Eat my shit. Isn't I, that what he said? I think he said, eat my shorts. Eat my shorts. <laughs> so, but, but he kept talking about killing him. Which yeah. I'm like, okay. Is murder back? Bill. Murder's back, I guess. Murder Bill. Is murder back in wrestling? Cool. Um, Billy Schmurda. Let's not talk too much about Raw, but... It set up the pay per view. Sets up Crown Jewel. Ricochet losing in a twenty four seven match against Reginald. Jeez, uh, the Bearcat stuff. I think Dude, is very silly. Hold on, poor Ricochet. Huh? Poor, poor Ricochet. What did yeah. he do? Oh, uh, you know, no. yeah. There's two reasons. What did he do? Uh, what did he do? Uh, the Bearcat stuff. I think is very silly. Okay, I don't hate it. I don't hate it either. Like I know some people hate it. I'm like, I get that there's like a legacy with the Bearcat name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think it was thought of in that way. I really think it was like, well, what does he look like? You he think- loves anime. No, but we can't sell that weird shit. I'm telling you, this is what it was. Ah, that anime. Ah, weird shit. What? What? <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball. That no, that Stone Cold's thing. <laughs> and then Vince calls him. And Vince is a big DBZ fan, too. I don't know if you know that. About oh, really? Him. Yeah, him and Austin call each other all the time. They're like, like hey, Vince, you saw a piccolo? <laughs> He's like, God damn it. God damn it, I love Goku. Destroyations on on Cell. (laughs) And Android number 17, ooh la la. (laughs) Uh, But they they gave him the Bearcat name, which has a historic reference to it. But I think they were just like, what does this effing guy look like? He looks like a bear and he moves like a cat. Let's just call him Bearcat. I mean, that's that's literally what they probably did. Do you think he had one of those meetings with Vince where he was like, he just looked at him and was like, ah, so lithe and smooth in the ring like a cat. But a bear. <laughs> but a bear at the same time. He's like holding him by his arms, like just staring him right in the eyes. And Keith's like, all right, man, call me whatever the hell you want. I don't care. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, he yeah. defeated Akira Tozawa. No cannot, no submission match. Damien Priest defeated Sheamus, and Sheamus goes for surgery. Damien's my, uh, he's, he's my favorite part of Raw. Damien Priest? He really he's, adapted. Like, uh, he really did. And dude, he's a he's a veteran indie guy. He's a grandpa. He is a is he really? I think he's a grandpa. How old is he? He's like eternal, right? He's he's an eternal. Forty one. No oh, man, that dude that dude is like an eternal. <laughs> he has to be in his like five hundreds. He's, yeah. he's a vampire. He built the island of Puerto Rico. Oh my god, with his hands. <laughs> uh, he built, he's like he's like seven thousand years old. Him and Carlos Colon. Yeah. Uh, AJ Styles beat Riddle. Apparently, match of the night. Uh, Charlotte beat Dewdrop. To retain the Raw Women's Championship, I could see Vince loving Dewdrop. Um, I don't. I think it's silly, man. I mean, whatever. Uh, NXT. I don't want to spend time on it. We, yeah. we spoke about this, but um, uh, it was edgier. Yes. Um, and we got we got two spots. We got uh, you know, Frankensteiner with his promo. He really mm-hmm. should have been called Frankensteiner. You think so? Yeah. I mean, the guy. The guy is a creation in a WWE warehouse oh, of Rick, Ricky and Scotty's cells into one. He really is a combination of his uncle and his father. It's wild. It's really wild. And he sounds like Scotty. Mm-hmm. He has that weird high pitchness when he yells. <laughs> yeah. I don't eat eat my shit. And that's what he says. <laughs> do, you, do you like my Braun Breaker? It's pretty good. I like. <laughs> you want to hear my Brock Lesnar too? Yeah. Eat my shit. <laughs> Same thing. That's all they do. They just scream, eat my shit to people. So what if, I'm going to pop you right now. Yeah. So what if they called him Frankensteiner and gave him the PCO entrance? Yeah, that's what I want. Like, him that's on what the I chair, want. just getting electrocuted. <laughs> that's what I want. And then, like, you know, yeah. what, you know what we should do? Okay, he challenges to Master Chomp. We're having fun today. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm, I'm loose. Yeah, today. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Uh, he he can't beat to Master Chomp, right? <laughs> yeah. And Rick Steiner shows up. Mm. And he's like, he's like... We got to bring you back to your origin, Rex. Oh. And he's like, okay. And then all of a sudden in the back, it's Scott Steiner, but he's dressed as Dr. Frankenstein. Oh, boy. Right? So he's the doctor. And uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and Rick Steiner's, what was the hunchback's name? Uh, Igor. Igor. He's Igor, right? And they're like doing all mm-hmm. this like elixirs and concoctions, and they start uh-huh. zapping him, and he turns into 
a Frankenstein monster. Like he looks like Frankenstein's monster. He looks like he he looks like, and then he has like the one white the the one blonde strip. Oh, and then he has like the head, like the big uh, because you can make him look like Frankenstein with the earmuffs. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, absolutely. So he just comes like like that, and he's like, ah, oh, eat my shit. <laughs> Over and over again, <laughs> dude. I'd, I'd flip. I'd love it. I'd be like, "What's happening?" Um, do you think? Do you uh, think this is somewhat of a like a tiny ploy to get Scott? Scott's in, banned into the <laughs> into the Hall of Fame. Scott's banned. They He's don't done. want to get, done. They, they could, yeah, listen, I, I, I think I think a lot of people like get worked up in the work. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he is a crazy man, but I yeah. think he's he's less crazy than people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm excited for it, dude. I think I, I'm really into him. I'm really into Braun Breaker. Yeah, he's great. I, yeah. Listen, he's like if you want big and colorful and like lunacy, I think that's that's a good direction. I like Odyssey Jones too on the roster. Odyssey Jones too. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Next week, Tony D'Angelo debuts. Tony D'Angelo, who's who's a Tony Soprano. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. You think it they're is, gonna go that Gobble way? Gold. They're gonna go Gabagool. You think so? A hundred percent, dude. And they're gonna steal it from us. We introduced Gabagool to the pro wrestling community. I th- <laughs> Nobody ate Capicola before we brought it up. Oh, can I take a little sidetrack right yeah. here? So the last season of Sopranos was on yesterday while I was working. Yeah. Background noise, right? Yeah. I do think I do think Tony dies at the end. You think Tony dies? I think at Tony the end. dies at the end. I think the shot of him looking towards the door and the cut to black is the end of his consciousness. I think he gets arrested. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think he, I think he dies. I think like he gets his uh. He gets his gabagool exposed. I think Art Anderson shows up with a Glock. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got twenty minutes here. All right, uh, go ahead, Dynamite. Uh, let's go into Dynamite. CM Punk on commentary, very fun um, opening match. First of all, you get three amazing intro songs: Jungle Boy, CM Punk, and Adam Cole. Right? Does everybody yeah. in AEW have ridiculous? Oh, music? it's a concert. That's what it is. It's a freaking mm-hmm. concert. Uh, Adam Cole beats Jungle Boy. Is it the best match of Jungle Boy's career? It was a very good one. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I I I haven't watched a lot of his stuff that super close, but it was a fantastic match. They did a great job with it. You got a nice uh, elite promo with Carl Anderson introducing everybody and Kenny cutting a, uh, Kenny cutting a great promo. Kenny cut down the CM Punk chats chance like this yep. dude, which I think like that's a testament to like people say Kenny sucks on the mic. No, I think he's great. I think he's great. I think that's a testament to his skills on the microphone where he. Immediately shut that yeah. shit up. You dude, know? Ruckus is killing it with his oh, music dude, yeah. too. We gotta get him on the show. Yeah, he. I think he follows us. Yes. Um. Dan, Dan, uh, Brian Danison starts a no balls Kenny chant. Brian Danison is cutting those WWE style promos though. I don't mind it. I don't mind it either. I don't mind it, man. He's got so much love. Uh, Cody and Lee Johnson with Brandy and Arn beat Dante Martin and Matt Sydal. Very interesting match. So after the match, Arn cuts a promo on Cody and tells Cody that he's the type of guy, if he was getting carjacked, who would let, he would let the carjacker steal his car. Please don't hurt me. Yeah. Right. And then Arn goes, if the difference, the difference is I would pull out my Glock and that is verbatim. He yeah. said Glock. And, and, and like wreck your dome or something, blow your brains out or I, something like that. Yeah. He said something along the lines of, I will blow your brains out in something. It was wild. So, he calls Cody a loser. Yeah. Right? Because I don't train losers. Yeah. What's happening? What is Arn is <laughs> going nuts? He's gone rogue. I would I didn't see that covered either. And then Lee was being really aggressive with Cody in the match. He did that he did that the tag on the back. Oh, uh, when he pulled, uh, pulled him, Co- yeah. Cody's tights. Yeah, that was really cool. Um how, do you like uh do you like Gangsta Arn? I like Gangsta Arn. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Uh, Mox, Kingston, Darby beat Bear Country with Anthony Green. Nice quick match. Um, Orange Cassidy in the Dark Order uh, beat the Hardy Family Office. Uh, Amanda Huber, Tay Conti, and Anna Jay came out, and it was like a nice little... This was like the Brody celebration. Okay, yeah. Right? Um, Leo Rush promo. Do you? How'd you like that? Uh, it was okay. I was talking money, man. I'm not, I, I don't know. Yeah, he was talking investments, mm-hmm. so I guess that's his, that's his gimmick now. He's a stock guru. Oh, imagine if they call him like the crypto pimp. The crypto pimp. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I want to be the crypto pimp. You can steal that. Yeah. Uh, MJF came out with Wardlow called Dab- Dabby, called Darby a school shooter with a skateboard. Oh my God. Yeah. You know what? That was, they're pushing the MJF stuff, which I love. Listen, I'm all about, I- I'm about taking it to the freaking line. I'm a hundred percent, but 
I feel like if you take it to the line too much, there's nothing left. There's nothing left, and you're gonna cross it, and you're gonna get into some big, big trouble. Right, or it just you just burn out that that character. You know? Do you think MJF will ever turn face? I think when he does, mm-hmm. I, I'm curious to see what he would be like as a face. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I think he would. He might do way better as like an asshole face. Okay, you know, he really is. Him and the Miz are like the same same energy. But MJF is taking it to such a different level because they're both very good talkers and like similar cadence. Yes. You know, I think that would be kind of I think you nailed like a dream promo sesh like Miz versus MJF. Yeah. Uh, And you got Sammy Guevara beating Miro to win the TNT title. Uh, Great match. Lots of fun. They gave him like the confetti and all that stuff. And in the middle of roads to the top. The Brandy and Cody reality yeah. show. They cut to a live backstage with Sammy. Oh, did they? I didn't see it. Yes. Oh, interesting. So they, I think it was like after the second or third commercial break, they cut to Dynamite with Tony Schiavone and Sammy and Sammy going, hey, yeah, I won, blah, 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 blah. I got a message on my Twitter saying Bobby Fish. So next week it's me and Bobby Fish. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. Come on. That's freaking cool. I want to see Bobby Fish. So my question is, I like the I like inserting how they inserted that into the reality show, right? Do Robert th- Halibut, he's debuting. Do you think that's like that TNT version of being the elite? Where it's like I think so. They're they're squeezing in the real shit yeah. then the, to move the storylines forward, yeah, right? I think so. I think they're going to do a lot of that. Did you watch uh, Road to the top. I didn't. My my wife wanted to see it, uh, so I have it on DVR. Very dramatic. Uh, is it? Yeah, it's got, good. It's fun. Does it make you like them more or dislike them more? It makes you like them more, okay. but it also makes you really like. This is just me. This is not a gripe, but it really makes you stare at that neck tattoo. <laughs> you know, like because when when they're sitting and you're like, ah, can I tell you something? Nice guy. Can I tell you something? You got one. You covered up everything. I got one. I got. I got one. Uh, I do, I do have a bet where if the Mets win the World Series, Bob and I, uh, Uncle Bob and I, go and get matching Mr. Oh, Met tattoos on our ass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll get like a little Mr. Met, but I want it to be like a stick figure with the Mr. Met hat head. You should get a Mr. Met, and he should get a Mrs. Met. Ooh, yeah. And, and then, then, then you could, could touch him. You could bump butt You could bump bumps. <laughs> bump bumps. Uh, right. Friday Rampage. Yours truly, Andrew Zarian broke the story. Yes, Brian Danielson and Nick, Nick Jackson. Uh, in a match, you got mm. a no DQ match, three way Jade Cargill, Thunder Rosa, and Nyla Rose, and you got fun. a hair for hair match. Jack Evans is losing his hair. I think so. Or maybe they do some swerve versus uh, Orange Cassidy. Do you want to see a bald Orange Cassidy? No, no. <laughs> I, I think that would take away the magic. Yeah. Uh, AW Dynamite anniversary lineup nine six next week. The Elite, Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, and the Young Bucks versus Danielson, Christian, Jurassic Express. Sheeta's back against Serena Deeb. Awesome. Bobby Fish versus uh, Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship, and you got a casino awesome. ladder match. The winner gets a title shot. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. No Bray Wyatt yesterday. People thought that dude was showing up. I don't know why. No Wyndham Rotunda, I should no say. No Wyndham Rotunda. I don't know why. A lot of people think that he um, he was going to debut. I don't know why. He's under contract. Maybe Hangman comes back next week. Hangman is coming back s- in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. All right, so um, do you want to jump into a few questions before we get out of here? We got to get out of here yeah. in like Yeah, do you want to read minutes. the plugs and then uh, read yeah. the uh, sponsor spot? Let's see. Hang on one second here. All right, guys. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can help us by becoming a, subscri- a subscriber on Patreon or a YouTube member. Perks include access to MG Geek's notes, which are very comprehensive for the most part. Like We kind of uh, compress them while we're live, but they're a lot of fun. Uh, you get his notes. You get the behind-the-scenes travel blogs, which we've been doing. Uh, extra shows are coming soon and more. Uh, we're re-revamping the Patreon tiers, so we're going to offer you guys a lot more stuff. Um, if your main way of watching the show is YouTube, you can become a member and enjoy many of the same perks and get custom emojis like Where's Denise, Intern Deacon, during live shows and watch-alongs. Uh, pricing tiers start as little as $2. Two bucks! For more information, visit us at patreon.com slash mattmenpodcast. Um, or click on the join on youtube for more information so on the patreon we are going to be more hands-on with it uh we will respond to your messages regularly we have noticed a backlog of messages that were unaddressed 
Uh, we're really going to ramp this up and it would be awesome for you guys to support us. Like we said, patreon.com slash Matt Men podcast. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have so much stuff that we want to do. Go ahead. Somebody asked me if I would, I, and this is a real question, if I would be mm-hmm. willing to sell like eight by tens of potatoes where I autograph them. And I said, a hundred percent. Oh yeah. You know what? If you sign up for Patreon, we should do that. Uh, you get an autographed potato photo. I'd love that. Because I think it's it, it would be cringy for me to sign something and mail it to you. What about if it's you holding a potato like up to your eye? <laughs> That's the eight by ten. Yeah. Like Nido. Nido, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, instead of doing this, I do the uh, I do a potato. potato. I put a potato there. Uh Chris Farrell says, Where do you prefer we support YouTube or Patreon? Uh Patreon. Yeah. I mean it depends how you're supporting. You know, you're throwing us a couple bucks. Uh both give you different perks. Both are, you know, two different uh some people like Patreon. Some people don't like Patreon. So yeah, Patreon's very interesting too because uh, I th- I believe Patreon has an app that you can just do everything through the app. Yeah. You know, like right on your phone or your your tablet. Uh, you want to do questions? Yeah, let's do it. We got a couple questions here. Uh, f- from the super chat, Joel Wood four ninety nine. What percentage do you give the following guys in staying in WWE? Gargano, mm-hmm. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. I would say Owens most likely to leave. Really. Gargano most likely to stay, and Sammy. Sammy, I don't know. I think he would be he would be likely to leave. <laughs> if I, th- I think Gargano's so embedded there, you know, if Sammy hasn't been let go yet for whatever reason, I think they're doing something right. You know, plus it's given Sammy a big platform, especially with the Sammy for serious stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, Kevin, I feel like he's going to bounce. I'll say 50-50 on Kevin. I'll say Gargano sticks around because uh, I think NXT needs him. Isn't mm. it crazy how he's like the vet on NXT? He's in a wild, yeah. All right. Uh, pr- from Pratik, hey, Andrew and Rich, do you want to see Roman Reigns on Raw and Big E to SmackDown? No. I want to see R- Big E on Raw and, and Roman on SmackDown. Yeah. I think having SmackDown as Roman show, great call. Uh, the Englishman. What did the wives think of Katie Forbes while you were in Vegas? Uh, they loved it. Uh, that's every one of my friends. Yeah. Like, I, I hang out with, like, lunatics, cocktail yeah. witchesses, and, and, and strippers. Those are, like, my group of friends. <laughs> I think that's... It's a very, normal, it's a very yeah. normal scenario. Like, there was nothing abnormal about that interview other than the fact that I'm doing it for wrestling. <laughs> like, that's a normal... That's, like, a normal interaction I have on a regular day. So... My favorite part of that interview... Oh, we also have... um. We also have some new photos from there that I just uploaded yeah. to uh, MG. If you can post them in the Patreon, that'd be great. Um, I, sent you, I sent you a link to the folder. My favorite part of that interview was how we were having a serious-ish conversation with Rob Van Dam, mm-hmm. and her butt is banging against the side of his head. Oh, my God. While, while he is seriously delivering an answer. You like know? a very serious answer. No selling the butt smacking against the side of his head. Yeah. All right, do we that's have good. any more questions or that's it? Do we have no, none in here? Um, let's see. Going Broadway podcast uh, asks, I dig Bobby Fish to AEW. Do you think he sticks around or comes around periodically or like a one-off like Jeff Cobb? Um, you know, oh my God, I totally forgot about Jeff Cobb. Yeah. Jeff Cobb came during a pandemic, right? Yeah. With that Moxley match. Yeah. And again, that was, that was a surprise because I, I was like, yeah, he's a giant dude. And then Moxie's bigger than everybody on the yeah. planet. I keep forgetting that dude's like the most gigantic. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do we got any more questions here? I think you got to click on Twitter. Okay. Let's see. We got a couple more minutes. Click on that Twitter link yeah, over there. Got it. Okay. Sorry, guys. Give me like two seconds here. All right. I got one here. Yeah. Any update on Bray? Where's Hangman and does the Persian potato guy offer shipping? I don't know where he is. I think he was he, he's a spirit, so I don't think so. But mm. Hangman, a couple of weeks. Bray, a uh, 90-day contract. When does his 90-day run out? Uh, I feel like it, 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 was, it was yesterday? Mm-mm. Okay. No. I'm yeah, bad the Yesterday was based on the rumor that he may have passed off on a 90-day contract. Got it. Got he may it. have had an option. Well, also, the NXT guys have 30 days. Main roster guys have 90 days, right? Yeah. That's why Bobby Fish is showing up. Uh, Battler Club guy on Twitter... What up, guys? Any news on if they will be doing war games at Survivor Series? New Day versus Hurt Business versus Bloodline would be epic. Have a great day. They've never done a war games on the main roster, right? Yeah. So if you were to bring it, I think it's a great concept to bring it. Uh, I don't think they'll... I don't know what the Survivor Series plan is. I'll probably find out in another week or so. Okay. 
fascinating little tidbit mm. on Jericho's pod with Adam Cole. He mentions how Elimination Chamber was originally supposed to be War Games, and Vince did not want to do it. Oh, uh, you know, Hunter was pushing for War Games for right. years. Right. He loved the concept, and Vince hated it. Vince never liked the concept of War Games. He never liked it. Uh, this is one from our pal Vibor. Hey guys, is the rock a lock for this year's Survivor Series or have plans changed? I have not heard anything changing. I have not heard anything progressing. I know that that was the plan when we released the story uh, for his 25th anniversary in the wrestling business and a Survivor Series in mm -hmm. New York. I mean, listen, you could always do something quick with him. So I, I will find out when it gets when it gets closer. Do you want to do one more? Yeah, uh, this is from Eric. Do you think they should make Arn a Sopranos like consigliere? First of all, Eric, he's a, he's a he's a Queens kid, so perfect mm -hmm. appropriate question. Can you imagine they do that? He starts acting like Cell. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, Tom. I don't know, Tom. That face, that mm -hmm. face that man makes, it's too much. I can't do it. It's like this is the this is my Silvio face. I can't do it. It's tough. Uh, we got another super right. from Chris Farrell. Our inner circle and pinnacle basically closed down now. They ha it's softly, softly closed down. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> softly. It's not, it's not a full shutdown. Well, because they're not, you know, like, uh, I think that's fascinating where if you look at the grand scheme of AEW, right? The reason for Pinnacle and Inner Circle was to get all these guys on TV. Yeah. Right? Now that you have such an influx of talent, I think it is a little diminished. So, I have a... Let's see. So somebody asked me before. I didn't I didn't get a chance to I didn't get a chance to look into this, but you know, the report is that SummerSlam possibly in the UK Ooh. in a major stadium. Uh a lot of people are saying Wales for a major stadium SummerSlam. I I've also heard Wales, but I've also heard London. And that uh, doing media in London mm -hmm. would be a lot better if they're at, you know, like Wembley Stadium. Oh yeah. So I, I, I'm not sure. Listen, we got a ton of time or like eight months away, but there is no done deal. Somebody reported that a deal was done. There is mm -hmm. no done deal for the deal. Right, right. Like it, it, everybody I spoke to said, no, they're looking at a number of spaces. Um, Wales is heavily considered, but in talking to some other people, they had said that, you know, London would be way better for media reasons because okay. now you're in, you're in London and you could do all the media arrangements easily. Yeah. Yeah, so That'd we'll see cool. what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm interested in it. Very right. cool. All right, time to wrap it up. I got to get on the train, guys. Remember, subscribe to us. We're almost. We want to hit 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. We had a big boom the last couple days with a lot of subscribers. If you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button here. Also, hit the like button. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. You can follow Rich at PTC Rich. And we'll see you all next time. Later, guys. Take care.